The Ice Gem 360 from Silverstone is an ARGB LED 360mm AIO that has a price tag of around 155 US dollars. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. But before I get into the overview, to have full disclosure, Silverstone did send me over this cooler to test and review. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you end up liking this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it does help a lot. Plus, if you really like the channel and appreciate all the testing that I do, then please consider becoming a patron via Patreon. There is a link to the page down in the description. Okay, I'll be starting this overview with a quick rundown of the Ice Gem lineup. There are three AIOs in this lineup, the Ice Gem 360, the Ice Gem 280, and the Ice Gem 240. So it is nice and simple. So let's see what you get in the box of the Ice Gem 360. There's the AIO and fans, of course. There's the installation guide slash manual, a large bag with all the mounting hardware in it, there's also a large bag with the ARGB cables and connectors. So there's the 3-in-1 fan cable, an ARGB sync cable, a 2-in-1 ARGB extender cable, an ARGB controller, a SATA power cable for the ARGB controller, and a Molex to fan connector. Taking a closer look at the AIO, the radiator is aluminum with a FPI of 21. FPI is fins per inch. The tubing is rubber with a nylon cover and is a pretty typical length at 400 millimeters. The pump is inside the block and is 12 volts with a max rated RPM of 3000. The pump is powered by a separate three pin fan header. Now the top of the block does have a plastic cap on it and this is to scatter or fragment the light coming from the five volt ARGB LEDs that are integrated into the block. The cold plate of this block is copper and should have full coverage of the Threadripper IHS, which does make this block on the larger side. With the dimensions of this block being 76 millimeters wide by 76 millimeters long by 66 millimeters deep. Moving on to the fans now. These fans do have ARGB LEDs. They also have a four pin PWM connector. There are 11 blades on the fan which is a little unusual. They do have rubber pads on each corner to help with vibrations. The maximum rated RPM of these fans is 2,200, with the minimum rated RPM of these fans being 600. And the bearing is a hydraulic bearing. Okay, the dimensions of the radiator with the fans attached is 392 millimeters long by 120 millimeters wide by 54 millimeters deep. So that brings us to the socket compatibility. The Ice Gem 360 is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets and is also compatible with the HPC sockets from Intel. And for AMD compatibility, it's compatible with most AMD mainstream sockets as well as TR4 and TRX4. Okay, moving on to how to install this CPU cooler. The installation between Intel and AMD mainstream sockets is pretty similar, but if you are installing this cooler onto an Intel socket, please check your installation guide. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a clean, flat, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver, and you should also have some isopropyl alcohol. I'll be starting by installing the fans and radiator onto the case, or onto my chassis. I recommend installing the radiator along the top of the case with the fans on the top, orientated as exhaust. Now, if you wanted to install the radiator at the front of the case, with where this pump is located, this shouldn't be an issue, but it is best practice to install the radiator with the tubes at the bottom, if you can. I understand that it is not always possible to do so, but it is best practice. Now to install the block, you will need the motherboard mounted in the case. We will first need to find the provided backplate and spacer. You will then need to peel the spacer off the paper. For AM4, you'll need to stick the spacer on the groove side of the backplate. This is the side that will be touching the back of the motherboard. Now find the provided through bolt screws and plastic spacers. Slide the through bolts through the corresponding holes for your socket. 
then slide the plastic spacers over the through bolt screws. This will hold the screws in place while we align the back plate to the holes on the motherboard. So align the back plate and screws to the holes on the motherboard. Once you have, place the standoff spacers over the through bolt screws. The little circle on the standoff spacer needs to be facing the motherboard. And this will hold the back plate and screws in place while we install the block. Now you will need to find the AMD mounting clip. Mine came with the Intel mounting clip pre-installed, so you may need to remove that first. Simply slide the Intel clip off the block and slide the AMD clip on. With the AMD mounting clip on the block, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. So with the correct mounting clip installed, plus making sure to remove the sticker on the bottom of the cold plate, place the block cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the holes on the mounting clip to the through bolt screws. Then screw in the four spring retention screws to the through bolt screws. You will need to use a PH2 screwdriver to make sure that all the spring retention screws are tight. Once that's done, we'll need to plug in all the cables. Starting with the pump, this connector should be plugged into a pump header on your motherboard, if your motherboard has one. If your motherboard doesn't have a pump header, it can be plugged into a typical fan header. Next, I'll plug in all the fans. So find the three in one fan cable and plug in each of the three fans that are on the radiator. While the fan connector on the three in one fan cable should be plugged into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. With that done, I'm going to daisy chain the five volt ARGB cables of the fans, then plug the male lead from the fans into the female connector on the block, then plug the male lead from the block into the female connector on the motherboard sync cable. Then plug in the corresponding five volt ARGB connector into the motherboard. Plus you will need to plug in the motherboard sync cable SATA power lead into a SATA power cable. If you don't, the RGB LEDs won't work. And with that, we're all done the installation. Okay, now I'll quickly go over both the RPM range and the ARGB LEDs. Starting with the RPM of the fans attached to the radiator. So with the fans at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM of these fans at 2375-ish. When dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at around 755-ish. For the pump at 12 volts, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 2830-ish. Now on my motherboard, the pump was shutting off when the voltage dropped below 4.32 volts but at 4.32 volts, the motherboard was showing the RPM at 1760-ish. Moving on to the ARGB LEDs. Now, I don't like the way the block looks when looking at it straight on. There is no real diffusion with that plastic cap, but when looking at it from an angle, the cap does scatter the light quite nicely, so you don't see the hot spots of the LEDs, which in my opinion does look much better. So you may want to think about where you're going to place the system relative to where you're sitting if you really do want to be showing off the LEDs. For the fans, I think they look good. The LEDs are bright and the colors do look pretty good. And other than that, I'm really not sure what else to say about them. So then, on to the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. In the 87 watt full speed test, the Ice Gem 360 had an average CPU temperature of 67.4C. That does land this AIO on the top of the chart, but the Ice Gem 360 does have a DBA of 50.1, so that is quite loud. Then in the 35 DBA noise equalized 87 watt test, it still performed very well with an average CPU temperature of 69.8C. And again, that lands this AIO on the top of the chart. Now between the 35 dBA and full speed tests, there is only a 2.5 Celsius difference in temperature, but a 15 dBA difference. So in my opinion, it's really not worth running this AIO at full speed in this test or at this wattage. Now in the 150 watt full speed testing, we see much the same with the Ice Gem 360 at the top of the chart having an average CPU temperature of 71.9C. Then in the 150 watt noise equalized test, 
the Ice Gem 360 ties the Frost Commander 140 with an average CPU temperature of 76.3 C, which is around a 4.5 Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and the full speed tests. So again, I don't think the 15 dBA sound level difference is worth that 4.5 Celsius difference. So what do I think of the Ice Gem 360? Now, yes, at full speed, the Ice Gem 360 is subjectively and objectively loud, but it did perform pretty well in the 35 dBA tests. So just don't run the cooler at full speed and you should be fine. But I am still a bit torn on this cooler because the Ice Gem 360 has a price tag of 155 USD, which is a lot of money. And when compared to something like the Frost Commander 140 at only 60 USD, there's a big price difference. Now, would I recommend the Ice Gem 360? And my answer to that is, I guess it depends on your configuration, because if you do require additional case fans for your build, then you can use the AIO as an exhaust or intake rather than buying additional fans. Because the thing is, a good set of ARGB LED case fans can cost anywhere between 40 and 70 USD. So if you subtract that from the price of the Ice Gem 360, you're looking at around 75 to 110 USD, which makes it pretty competitively priced to a good air cooler. Now, when compared to other 360 millimeter AIOs, it is fairly competitively priced. Plus, the Ice Gem 360 does or did pretty well in my 35 dBA testing, so it's not a bad cooler. It really does depend on your needs and how much money you can get it for in your region, on if the Ice Gem 360 makes sense for you. And now for the elephant in the room, the cables. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something you need to understand. And that is, there is a lot of cables. And this isn't an issue with just the Ice Gem 360, but an issue with all ARG LED things. There's just a lot of cables that need to be managed. Ish. Some people might be fine with just shoving a rat's nest into the back of the case and calling it a day, but my OCD doesn't let me do that. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. And speaking of calling it a day, that's all I got for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. I post all the charts there. There's a link down in the description to that. You can also support the channel directly via Patreon. Again, there'll be a link in the description. You may want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.